Welcome to part three of Runner's Knee. I think I'm gonna break this up again into three parts because I just couldn't put it all into one post. I got too excited. I'm super excited about this part. I feel like anybody can talk about strength training for runners and range of motion or stretching for runners, but where the rubber meets the road is mechanics. And this is where I'm trying to simplify it the best that I can. So the three parts, overstriding, crossing midline, and quadzilla. First part, all about overstriding. If you're just tuning into this for the first time, make sure you go back to the previous two. This is, first one is falling under this normal compression. It's an amplification. So we're getting normal forces on the back of the kneecap, just amplified and higher than it needs to be. Before we talk about overstriding, we need to talk about what is a stride? What makes up a stride? So you'll notice that there's differences in stride length with different speeds, that is true. I had a previous post about different speeds and how your stride changes and what makes up the stride. We're going to break up the stride into kind of two parts or two halves. So you see the distance between one step to the other, that's a stride. And then we have, again, it gets a little bit longer and a little bit longer. The problem is, is when we get into trouble, is when we try to increase that stride in front of us. We try to take a step too far out in front, we think it's going to speed us up, we're taking a bigger step. It's just slowing us down, as you'll see here. So when we say overstriding, we're talking about this front part of the stride of where you land being too far out in front of your center of mass. You'll see here I have superimposed toe off and my initial contact. That's that stride superimposed. But it's all coming back full circle. So hopefully a lot of you, you have this aha moment or a light bulb goes off. But we've got these four criteria of what I think are the most important things for runners. It's pass, fail. Pass, move on, fail, what could it be underlying? You'll see that with these three uh, running form faults, they fall under these classifications. So this first one about overstriding, my first criteria was knees never lock out in front. So how do you know if this is you? How if you're a clinician or you're a coach and you're working with someone that's running? How can you just do a kind of a basic assessment without fancy tools and um, software to know are they overstriding? Well, if their knees never lock out in the front, chances are that they're probably not overstriding. So it's a very simple pass fail. So one of three is overstriding is a common cause of anterior knee pain or runner's knee. That line, that represents my center of mass. The further that I land out in front of that, the more it's gonna slow me down. The closer that I land to it, it's gonna maintain my speed. If I'm landing behind it, I'm accelerating. So when I say overstriding, it's landing too far out. What is too far? There's no normative data. It's we just try to land as close to that center of mass as possible. Keeping in mind that center of mass will change. If I'm leaning forward, if I'm leaning backwards, that can change where your center of mass is, as we'll see as we go on. But typically with this, we'll see an overextended knee, the knee almost straight, if not locked out. Imagine jumping off of a ladder with your knee locked out. The quad can't help you out. It's all bones, joints, cartilage, not good. I'm heavy on the heel. If I'm landing on my heel, your calcaneus, your heel bone, there's no muscle directly, there's just a little bit of padding. If you land more midfoot towards between the ball and the heel, then your calf muscle can be that first line defense to help to absorb some of that impact of when we land, of that coming up the chain, and then also the quad as well. So landing as close to that line as possible is what our ultimate goal is. Maybe this will sink in with some of you. Maybe you guys will think, what the heck is he doing? Either way, if it helps one person, I'm happy. So imagine if I am crawling and I'm trying to speed up. Would I take a big step out in front or a big arm step when I'm trying to move forward? What's that going to do? It's going to slow me down. I'm trying to keep my momentum going forward and I'm taking that kind of a step out in front. So it's constantly slowing me down. So same idea when it comes to running. I want to try to land as close to underneath. So there's an example. I want to try to land as close to underneath my shoulder or our hip as possible to keep our momentum driving forward. So how do you know if this is you? How do you know if you're overstriding? You've been told you're a loud runner, whether it's on the treadmill, outside. Your cadence tends to be 155 and below. We show that that tends to be associated with overstriding, your number of steps. We're going to go over the simple way today about how to increase your step rate to try to help fix that overstriding. It works for a lot of people, but not everybody, but it's a very good starting place, whether it's for yourself personally or you're working with somebody. 
you see wear pattern on the outside corner of the shoe. So we'll see here, because I'm taking that step further out in front, I'm landing, I tend to wear out that back corner of the heel. So that's another way you can know if you're overstriding. And the other one is just video yourself from the side. Whether you go on the track, put it on a tripod, go, hit slow motion, whether you go to the treadmill, go to the treadmill and set it up, have somebody film it for you, but just take a video. So here it is. Here's the first fix, increasing your step rate. So I used to have you count the number of steps, increase it by five to 10% because they showed that can reduce that loading rate or that impact by up to 10%. Instead of doing all that, you just download a free metronome app. There's a bunch of them out there and you just hit 170, 175. The goal is 180, but we'll see in future posts, sometimes too high of a cadence can be detrimental, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But instead of figuring out what exactly is yours, just a quick shotgun approach, we're gonna try to put your uh, step rate up to about 170, 175, and see if you can step up with it. Every time you hear that beat, you're trying to step. So here I'm going to show you differences of me running at 160 beats per minute or strides or cadence and then also at 180 and we'll see why increasing your step rate while keeping the speed the same. That's the most important part. Your speed has to stay the same. Why does that help? Why does that prevent us from overstriding? So with 160 steps, we'll see the difference is I'm spending more time in the air. And what does that mean? More time in the air, the further I go up, the harder I come down, the more impact that I'm taking. And also we'll see a greater contact time. I had a post previously about how we strike, how we punch that on off versus through. So people that have this lower cadence tend to drive through the cement instead of bop bop on off. So we'll see how by keeping my speed the same and increasing my cadence to 180, I don't have as much time to go up and down. I don't have as much time to overstride. I'm trying to bring that footing back underneath here is where it is. This is it. I've been talking about this for years. I finally, with the software, which is getting better at the video editing skills, I'm able to kind of illustrate to you guys why this is and what the difference is. So you're going to see here on the left, I'm going to overstride. On the right, I am going to land underneath me more appropriately. Right now, it looks exactly the same. Your body has a decision to make right before you hit the ground. We call this late swing phase or right before you land, we've got a choice. What does our body naturally think to do? We think to just keep going out with our step, keep going forward, the crawling, land out in front. Instead, it requires an extra step mentally to say, oh yeah, bring my foot back underneath me, bring my leg under me to land closer to my center of mass to keep my momentum going forward. But right here, what we're gonna see is with the lower step rate, 160 versus 180, the decision, the change is gonna be this, right there. Right before I went to land, here it kept going, here I brought it back underneath. So some things to point out, foot flat, a lot of space, a lot of inclination of distance between the ball of my foot and the ground, heavy contact on the heel, landing more midfoot. Also notice here, how far out in front that is, the distance between my knees, the distance between my knees. So of that stride, the front portion is increased. That's the overstriding component of it.